Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45 real quick, because I'm going to show you something. Bring it out! We, when this truth start coming out, we want to cleave to our enemies. When this truth start coming out, and when the truth is being revealed to us, the first thing we think about is, well, what about the so-called white man? What about his salvation? He ain't on this side. Why he ain't on this side? Read what you got, bro. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45. Come on. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee. Go to verse 15. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass. If thou art not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So we're going to we're gonna talk about why we got in this condition. Come on. Read it again. But it shall come to pass. If thou art not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If you don't listen to God. Come on. To observe to do all his commandments and the statutes which I command thee this day. All the commandments that he only gave to us. Right. He only gave us these commandments. He right. didn't give these commandments to nobody else in the world. Yeah. He gave them to you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Right. You, right. the children of Israel. Come on. That all these curses. All these what? Curses. Come on. Shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So God said, if y'all children of Israel, you black people, you so-called Hispanic people, and you so-called Native American people, if you do not keep these commandments, all these curses are going to come upon thee and overtake thee. Verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters uh -huh. shall be given unto another people. Now we're talking about your children. He said that your children would be given to another people. This is a curse. This is one of the signs of a cursed people. That your children will be given to another people. Who that happened to? Did that happen to your people? Yeah. Were your children I've snatched from have. you? Were I've your children have. snatched from you from another continent I've and given to another black. people on another continent? You're wrong. Did that happen to your people? Yes. Sir. No, you are emphatically wrong and a liar according to the Bible. Right. This right. did not happen to your people. Put up Google and show me white people with yokes of iron on their neck. Show me white people going into slavery by another nation. Right. That never happened today on this earth. This yep. Bible is describing who you are. You are not a black woman. You are not a black man. You are God's chosen people. That's right. Three. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. That is called slavery. You have never been a slave. Read. Right. And that I shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. It says that you're going to look and see your children taken away from you and you can't do nothing about it. Why? Because he sent these people against you. Jumped over to verse 45. Verse 45. Moreover, all these curses. He said, all these curses, come on, shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee. Uh huh. And overtake thee uh -huh. and thou be destroyed. Until you be destroyed. Read. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So, but because we did not hearken unto the voice of our God, come on. To keep his commandments Read. and his statutes which he commanded thee. Uh huh. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. These curses are going to be on your people for a sign. Burr. What is that sign again right there? What's that sign? It's a stop sign. So how do you know to stop? Damn, the sign says stop. Right. Now, these curses are going to be on your people for a sign. Right. The Bible is giving you a sign so that when you read the Bible and you say, children being taken and given to another people, well, that only happened to so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. That only happened to them. That is the sign that you are of the nation of Israel. Right, right. You are God's chosen people. Read on. Right. And for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. He said this curse is going to be upon us forever until a specific time period. Come on. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God. Because we did not want to serve our God. Because we did not want to keep the Sabbath day holy. Because we did not want to reverence the Passover. Because we did not want to love one another. These things came up, came upon us. Read. With joyfulness and with gladness of heart. Come on. For the abundance of all things. For the abundance of all things because he created the world for us. Yes, he right. created the whole world for us. Everything on this earth belongs to you. Right. Everything on this earth belongs to you, sister. You don't need a crack cocaine to right. make you feel like you deserve something. Yeah. Right. You own the earth and everybody on it. Right. Right. They belong to you. Yes, right. Read. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. But because God gave you the whole world, because he gave you the whole earth to rule it, and you did not want that, now you're going to do what? Shalt thou serve thine enemies. Now you're going to serve your enemies. When did you serve your enemies? When? I serve my enemy when? every day. When? When did you serve your enemies? Every day. You served your enemies in slavery. Right. right. You served your enemies today. 
Right. You serve your enemies when you go to your job. Right. Right. You serve your enemies when you go and pay for your food. Right. Right. When you pay your light bill, when right. you pay your rent, Jeez. you are serving your enemy. That's right. When God gave you the whole earth. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Hold on. Wait a minute now. The Bible just said that God is going to send your enemy. Again. Did it say friend? Read it again. Which the Lord. Read up. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemy. No, you're going to serve your friend. Thine enemy. No, because we hug up, we hold hands, and we join together, they're your friend. Shalt thou serve thine enemy. God called the people that did this to you. What do he call them? What do he call them? Enemy. Read it again. I will give it a picture. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemy. What did God call these people? What did God call these people? He called them your enemies. Right. So did that change? No. no. Did it change? No. It did not change. Right. They were your enemies then, and they are your enemies now. Read. That's right. That's right. The Lord shall sin against thee. God sent your enemy against you because you were given God's commandments. You decided to break God's commandments. You decided to not keep the Sabbath day holy. You did these things. God sent the enemy against you. Come on. In hunger. In hunger. You're going to serve your enemy. So when you go work your bust your ass on that job and get that paycheck, you're going to take it right back to the same people that put you in slavery. Right. Come on. And in thirst. When you're thirsty, you don't own Dasani. You don't own uh, Aquafina. You don't own that big old tower down there that says Columbia, South Carolina. If you don't pay your water bill, what happens? What happens if you don't pay your water bill? What happens? If you don't pay your water bill, Not sister, off. what's going to happen? Who's going to cut it off? I'm going to cut it off? Who gonna cut it off? The so-called white man is gonna cut your water off because you're gonna serve him for that water. Come on. That's right. And, and, and when you want your clothes, where you buy your clothes at? Salvation Army. Where you get your clothes from? J.C. Penney. The, the the mall. Who own those? Who own those? You don't own. You don't even own a damn thrift store. Bring it out. You don't even own a thrift store. You get your clothes from your enemies. That's, right. That's what God said. Come on. And in what of all things? Anything that you want. Driver's license, toothpaste, right. toothbrush, right. toilet paper. I don't give a damn what you want. You're going to serve your enemies. That's right. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. He shall do what? Shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Read it again from the top. That when it started at enemies. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So the Bible says, you come over here, brother. Don't walk by us trying to ask him. Come in here wholeheartedly. The Bible said what? Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies. Therefore, you're going to serve your enemies. Come on. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Which God, the Most High God, sent the enemy against you. Read. Right. And hunger. And No, no, no. Jump down now. Jump back down. Jump back down. Yep, right there. And he. And he. Shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Your enemies. Read it again. And he, your enemy, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So, who's your enemy? So Who is your enemy? Y'all scared because he's standing there? Bring oh, it don't out. be scared. Bring don't be out. scared. Don't be white scared man. because your enemy is standing next to you. Read. Right. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. He's going to put a yoke of iron upon your neck. Until he have destroyed thee. Until you're destroyed and you're calling yourself black. Right. Until you're destroyed and you're calling yourself African American. Right. Until you're destroyed and you're right here referencing Nicki Minaj, Beyonce, uh, uh, Remy Ma, all these idiot, idiot representations for a black woman. You are destroyed. Right. You are destroyed now because you think that to live a good life, oh, you got to go out here and twerk a little bit. Right. Oh, to live a good life, to have the finer things in life, you got to go swing on a pole a little bit. Bring it out. You got to sell your soul to 15 brothers a week to live a good life. Jeez. That is a lie. You are a princess. You should put on a dress and wear a beautiful crown on your head as a covering to show your royalty that the Most High bestowed upon you. Right, right. Right. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck Come on. until he have destroyed thee. But well, you are destroying people now. So now in 1863, when the Emancipation Proclamation is signed, guess what that symbolized? Guess what that symbolized, Columbia? Uh, in 1863, yeah. when the yeah. Emancipation Proclamation was yeah. signed, yeah. it signified that you are a destroyed people. Yeah. Right. You do not know where to go. 
you have no land, you have no language, you have no culture, you have been destroyed as a people. Right. So we don't need yokes of iron on their neck anymore. We don't need yokes of iron on their feet anymore. Why? Because the yokes of iron are now on your brain. Go right. back to Romans 12 and 2. Come on. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Bring it out. And be not conformed to this world. God said, do not be conformed to this world. Do not accept the things that you've been given here in America. Right. America has given you their crumbs when we built this whole entire country up. That's yeah. right. The sweat, blood, bones, and tears of your ancestors are soaked in American soil. Right. Yeah. Be not conformed to this world. Read. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What is going to renew your mind? Get that in Psalms chapter 19 and verse 7. What is going to renew the mind of the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American man? What does it take to get us out of this condition? The same thing that caused us to be in the condition. Right. We did not keep God's commandments, family. Now we suffer here in America. Right. We think we're black. What color are your pants? Are you black? Hell no. Bring it out. Your skin is brown. We come in different shades of brown. Why? We're going to show you why. Read what you got right there. This is how you transform your mind. Read. Psalm chapter 19, verse 7. Come on. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. Where did we put the laws of God at? Where do we put them? In our mind. That's right. This is the renewing of our mind. Read. Converting the soul. Do what? Converting the soul. Changing our soul. Changing our mind. Because everybody say what? I want to go to heaven. If I ask all of y'all right now, you want to go to heaven? Everybody will shake their head, yeah, I want to go to heaven. How do you get there? How do you get there? How do you get there, sister? Got to be good and what else? Do great things according to God, right? The, sister, the young sister said, to get to the kingdom of heaven, you got to be good. Get that in Romans chapter 7, right? Get that in Romans real quick. We're going to show you. You are right, sister. But good according to what? Remember, we're talking about what? The renewing of our what? Mind. How do, where do we where do we put God's law? In our mind. Read. Romans chapter 7, verse 12. Come on. Read out. Wherefore the law is holy. It says the law is holy. Come on. And the commandment holy. And the commandments are holy. And just. And just. And good. And what did the sister say? And good. So good is keeping God's laws. That's right. If we had kept God's laws from way back way. If our forefathers had kept God's laws from way back, guess what? We would not be where we are now. Where is that right. Ezra when he gave us the world? Give me that in Ezra. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. He made all of this that you see before you would not be if our forefathers had not broken God's commandments. Right. But because our forefathers decided to run after the other nations, decided to do the things of the other nations, now we are suffering the captivity that God promised would happen to us. Bring it and out. In this captivity, you've been told that you're an African American. In this captivity, you've been told that you are black. You have been lied to since the, your conception on earth. You have been lied to. Mama's lied because she was lied to. Grandma lied because she was lied to. Teachers lied because they get paid to lie. Teach. We have not known who we are. Right. We do not know that we are the greatest people ever to walk the earth. That's we right. feel it. We feel that we are, we are the greatest people. But why can't we ever reach our full potential with the things that we know we can accomplish? Because the hands of God is against us right. until we come back to keeping these commandments. Read. Second Ezra chapter 6 verse 54. Come on. And after these, Adam, whom also thou made us Lord of all thy creatures. So Adam was created first. He was made Lord of all the creatures. Come on. Of him come we all. All of us come from Adam, right? Read. And the people, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. And the people whom you chosen. So, the Bible is making a distinction. It said that all people come from Adam. Right. But also, the people whom you have chosen. Hold that. Hold that. Go to Deuteronomy chapter uh, 7 and verse 6. We're going to read. We're going to see who is this people that God chose. I'm about to have you holding a few things. You got to get uh, Deuteronomy chapter 1 and 1 too. We have to establish the people that God chose because right. we think we think as we think God chose Christians. So everybody right. say, "I'm going to the Christian church. I'm gonna be a Christian now because God chose Christians." Bring that is in the Bible. That is not in the Bible. 
all these churches that are set up, how come they all don't fall under one name and one pattern? How come they all don't represent one thing in the Bible and keep the laws? How come they all do something different? Because they liars. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 1. So we're establishing the audience of the people that God chose and who he's talking to. Read. These be the words which Moses spake. Moses? You know who Moses is? All right. These be the words who Moses spake. Unto all Israel. Unto who? All Israel. No, to the whole world. All Israel. To the so-called white man. All Israel. To the so-called Japanese man. All Israel. Only the Israelites God Israelite. gave these words to, all right? Yes, Do right. not ever be confused again. We're reading it out of the Bible. So now, who's God talking to? Israel. The children of Israel. Go down to Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Come on. Deuteronomy Bro. chapter 7 verse 6. Read it out. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Bible says that thou art an holy people Unto the Lord thy God. No, it said unto me. Unto the Lord thy God. Unto soldier Mikael. Unto the thou art an holy people. Unto the Lord thy God. No, y'all are holy people to me and this brother right here. Unto the Lord thy God. You are holy people unto God Himself. That's right. Who's God talking to? Israelite. The children of Israel. Read. Right. The Lord thy God have chosen thee. He did what? The Lord thy God have chosen thee. The Lord thy God has chosen the children of Israel. Come on. To be a special people uh -huh. unto himself. He chose you to be a special people unto himself. Yeah, you got a favorite right. color? What's your favorite color? Pink? Purple? Yellow? Blue? Oh, that's my favorite color, girl. You got something in common. You see that? So, your favorite color. Is that your mom's favorite color? No. That's your favorite color. Read that part again. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So just like you chose the color blue to be a special color to yourself, God chose you, us, the Israelites, to be a special people unto himself. That's Meaning, right. out of all of the other people on the earth, he looked at us blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans and said, them right there. I'm choosing them. Those are going to be my people. They're going to be different and set apart from everybody else. I'm going to give them the law, statutes, and commandments to keep. Right. Read. Above. Wait a minute. Below. Above. In the middle. Above. No, we're equal to. Above. Uh-huh. All people that are upon the face of the earth. The Bible says, God himself says, the mouth of God says that you're supposed to be above all people on the face of the earth. That's right. So why aren't you on the, why aren't you above all people on the face of the earth? Because we broke the commandments. Our forefathers broke the commandments. Right. Now right. go back to Ezra. So we have established who is the audience that's being spoken to? Israel. Who is God chosen people? Israel. So let's see who he gave the world to. Read. Second Ezra chapter 6 verse 55. Come on. Get out. All this have I spoken before thee, uh -huh. O Lord, Read. because thou madest the world for our sakes. So God made the world, meaning in the creation of creations, he said, I'm going to make this world, I'm going to create earth. I'm going to put atmospheres and layers in it and give them air to breathe while they're there. I'm right. creating this world for this people. Read. As for the other people. And as for the other people, come on. Which also come of Adam. Because they come from Adam too. That's right. that, that lady right there. They come from Adam too, come on. Thou hast said uh -huh. that they are nothing. What did God say? Thou hast said that they are nothing. Did I say that they are nothing or did God say that they are nothing? God said, God said what? Read it again. Thou hast said that they are nothing. So you can join hands with her all you want. You can hug her all you want. That doesn't change the words of God. You right. are your enemy, and she still has nothing to God. That's you better, right. you gotta know. God chose them to whoop your ass. That's what He did. He chose this people to put a whooping on you. When your child is bad, you take that belt off. You, you, take that, you, give, you, you punish her, right? She gets a punishment, right? So, as the children of God, when we go outside of what God has given us, should we get a punishment? Should we get a punishment? Yeah, we should get a punishment. I'm going to show you our punishment. Here is your punishment, brother. Here is your punishment, and here is the job that she came to do on earth. Right. Here is your punishment according to God. Read. But be like unto spittle. Oh, God said it be like unto what? Unto spittle. He said they like spit that fly out of your mouth. Teach. Read. And has likened the abundance of them. He said he likens the abundance of them, all of them, come on. Unto a drop 
that falleth from a vessel. He said that they are like a drop that falleth from a vessel. Meaning, if you got a big, you got, you ever, you ever mop the floor, right? You know mop the floor before. You know how you moving the bucket around and a little bit fall out. Yeah. Do you care? No. Why? Because you about to mop the whole floor anyway. Yeah. What did God say? And the abundance of them, all of them, unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. He compared all of them to a drop that falleth from a vessel, meaning a little bit of water that fall out of a bucket. They nothing to him. Right. Read. And now, O oh Lord, behold, these heathen. These what? These heathen. What did God call the so-called white man? These heathen. These heathens, come on. Which have ever been reputed as nothing. They've always been considered nothing, come on. Have begun to be lords over us. Now they lords over us. Now they rule over us. Now we work for them. All right. Bring it out. These people ain't never been nothing on the earth. Right. But now we serve them. Bring it out. Why? Because our forefathers broke the commandments. Because you're the Israelites. Because you're God's chosen people. That's right. right. They are your punishment. They're here to put pressure on you. They're here to make you feel like you're nothing. They're here to make you pay bills. Right. Read. And to devour us. And to do what? Devour us. They are here to devour us. Come on. But we thy people. But we thy people, God. Come on. Whom thou hast called thy firstborn. Whom you called. You called us your firstborn, Lord. Come on. Thy only begotten. The only one begotten of thee. Come on. And thy fervent lover. And thy fervent lover. Come on. Are given into their hands. Now we're given into their hands. When were we given into their hands? During slavery. Right. During yeah. slavery. Slavery ain't been that long ago. Don't ever forget that. They tell you, oh, slavery, forget about that. Oh, sh civil rights and all that, man, forget about that. But 9-11, never forget. Right. Never, 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 nine, never forget 9-11. Remember that forever. The Holocaust, oh, never, never forget that. But for you, slavery, oh, that was 500 years ago. You're still talking about that? Come on, come on. Kenny got shot down last week in the neighborhood. It was last week. Kenny's dead. You're still talking about that? Right. But never forget 9-11. Never forget the Holocaust. Why do you have to forget your history? You know. Because they don't want to be reminded of the horror that they've done to your people. Right. They don't want to be reminded of the punishment and the judgment that they are going to get for putting their hands on the children of Israel. Right. Because right. there is a punishment for it. That's there right. is a punishment for putting their hands on God's chosen people. Teach. But guess what? If you do not repent and come into keeping God's laws, there is a judgment for you as well. Right. Bring it out. So now, knowing these things, what is your nationality? Look at this sign right here. You're an Israelite from what tribe? Where do you find your tribe at on here? Look on his sign. On this side, this is what we've been called in slavery. This is what God calls us according to the Bible. You will be an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. That's what about right. you, sister? You will be an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. That's you right. are going to be what your father is. Because he's from the tribe of Judah, you're going to be from the tribe of Judah as well. Right. You are not black. Never again should you say that you're black, little princess. Never again should you let this world tell you that you are a black woman. There right. is no such thing as a black woman. You are a princess, and it's time for this world to respect you as that. That's right. right. Read Deuteronomy 7 and 6 again. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Come on. Yeah. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, uh -huh. above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So God has called us to be rulers on this earth. Right. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12 now. Bring it he out. called us to be rulers. But how do we do this? Today, in a short amount of time, in all of your life, you've never heard that you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, have you? Have you ever in your life heard that? How long ago? Last year? All praises. So you've been watching us for a while. Good, sister. That's very good. Stay on that path. But now, now that you know this, what, you, what, what do you do with it? What do you do now? We're going to show you. Don't worry. We're here to help you. We are out here to help our brothers and sisters. Right, right. We are out here to help every soul that wants to be helped and come back into the fold of God. Why? Right. Because destruction is on its way. Right. Salvation is on its way. Right. And you don't want to miss out. But there are things you must do. There are things we must change that we just read in Psalms chapter 19 and verse 7. We must change our minds. We must convert our soul. How do we do that? Read what you got. 
Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12. Uh -huh. Read out. And now Israel. Now you Israelites from the tribe of Judah. Come on. What does the Lord thy God require of thee? Now that you got this information, God requires something from you. Come on. But to fear the Lord thy God. You got to fear God. Meaning that you got to know that there is a judgment and a punishment for doing anything against what God requires you to do. Right. Read it again. But to fear the Lord thy God. Come on. To walk in all his ways. Uh -huh. And to love him. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. With some of your heart and some of your soul. With all thy heart and with all thy soul. That means there is a massive change that must take place. That must take place. Right. Are you ready for that change? You not ready yet? You got to get ready, sis. Give me that in songs. Uh, I made haste. What that? 50. Yeah. You gotta make haste, sister. Trust me. When I came, when I heard this word, I was not ready to make change. It's been seven years. When I heard this word, I was a drug dealer. I smoked more weed than you can think about. I was a whoremonger, a womanizer. I did all these things. When I heard this word, I was not ready to change that lifestyle. That lifestyle was good to me. So I thought, this lifestyle is what everybody on earth wants. I got money, I got cars, I lived a life. I did not want change when I heard this word. But we must desire that because we never know. Tomorrow you might get taken out. Right. Today you might get taken out. You don't know when God is gonna say, you know what? This sister done heard the word five, six times, seven, eight times. She don't wanna hearken. She don't wanna hearken. Read. Psalms chapter 119, verse 59. Read. I thought on my ways. Sister, think on your ways. Think on your ways. Come on. And turn my feet unto thy testimony. And then you got to turn your feet to God's testimony. You have to walk in this now. You can't just know that you're an Israelite. It don't work like that. Knowing you're an Israelite and not applying God's laws, we're go you're going to get the same thing that is your enemies are going to get. Right. They're putting their hands on you. You're going to die with them. Bring it Read out. it again. I thought on my ways. Got to think on our ways. Come on. And turn my feet unto thy testimony. And turn our feet to this Bible. Read. I made haste. Do what? I made haste. What does it mean to make haste? <laughs> to do it fast. David said he made haste. Come on. And delayed not. And he did not delay. To keep thy commandments. To keep the commandments of God. You don't, you don't want to delay on it, sis. Right. Let right. me ask you this question. What makes you not ready? The change comes when you start applying it. Right. See, you don't get change outside of the Bible. You have to get inside of the Bible. You need to inculcate the Bible within you to make change. It ain't going to happen as long as you put the Bible on this side and say, I'm going I'm to change on this side. Change don't happen over there. Right. You got to walk on this side where the Bible is at. That's where your change comes. It comes over time. When you're going to jump into this Bible, there's going to be things that you do not want to do. There's going to be things that you might feel like is just a little too much. I'm going to show you one. You want to hear one? Get Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Don't run. Get out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Don't run. This Bible is a, hey, this Bible is a two-edged sword. It will cut you and pierce you deep. But that's what God, that's what God wants. This is how you get tried in the fire. This is how you find out whether you can be that pure gold that God has called you to be. That's who you are. You just got to refine this thing. You got to clean it off. Right. Put gold up under there. Pure gold. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. Bring it out. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Come on. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Okay. So the Bible said that a woman can't wear that which pertains to a man, and a man can't wear that which pertains to a woman. Anybody that's doing that is an abomination unto God. Right. Let me ask this first. What is an abomination? Get that in Sirach. Uh, 17, 15, 15, 13, get that in Sirach. What is, it, what is an abomination? We're going to find out. Oh, and I'm going to tell you what. He's going to read it, and then I'm going to give you an example of what an abomination is, and you're not going to like it. I'm going to tell you. Read the book of Sirach, chapter 15, verse 13. Come on. Yeah. The Lord hateth all abominations. So, God said that if a woman is wearing that which pertains to a man, and a man is wearing that which pertains to a woman, 
He hates it. Read it again. The Lord hated all abominations. He said that anybody doing these things or dressing like this is an abomination, right? Now he says what? And they that fear God love it not. Read it again from the top. The Lord hated all abominations. So a man dressing like a woman and a woman dressing like a man or wearing things pertaining to a man is an abomination. The Lord said what? The Lord hated all abominations. He said, I hate an abomination. Come on. And they that fear God love it not. And if you love God and they that fear God, they love it not. Meaning they don't love to do those things that are abominable. Right. Now here's an example of an abomination. If I took a cup and threw up in it and gave it to you and said, here, drink that, would you drink it? That's a despicable, foul, nasty, that's just, it just makes your stomach hurt, right? You would not, who would do that? That's nasty as hell. That's what God says an abomination is. That's how he feels about it because it's nasty. It's despicable. Now, read Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5 again. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. It's going to hurt a little bit. It's going to hurt a little bit. But it got to hurt. Change hurts. Read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. What do you have on that pertains to men? I want that in Leviticus what? 42? 32? Uh, the pants were given to the man, huh? What do you got on that? Exodus, Exodus 28. Yeah. What do you have on that pertains to a man? Nothing. The pants. Pants belong to men. You want to tell you why? Because God says so for one. But our women never wore pants. Our women, when you look at, when you look at a, a, a princess, what does she have on? What do princes wear? A dress? Why? When you go to the prom, what do you wear? A dress? When you get married, what do you wear? Why? Huh? Feminine and what? You feel so beautiful. Right. Nobody can tell you that you're not beautiful in that day. When you go to the bathroom, how do you decide which uh, bathroom to go in? That right there. What, what's going on with this sign right here? If you had to go to the bathroom, which side would you go to? If you had to use the bathroom, point at which one you would go in. You would go in the one, why? Because you're a girl, but what, what, what does the sign tell you? It's a woman's bathroom because she got on a what? She has on a dress. So why do we wear dresses to proms, weddings, you know, things of that nature? But in our everyday lifestyle, we feel like I can't wear no dress because we've been conditioned in America. Right. America has conditioned you. Remember how we started this conversation, the renewing of your mind. Right. You got to renew that thing because America has said that it's okay for women to wear pants. Look at Cardi B. Look at Nicki Minaj. Look how tight it is. Can't you see all of that shape? That's supposed to be for this man right here at home, your husband. Get out. Ain't nobody else supposed to know what you got going on? Teach. When a movie is about to come out, right? When a movie is about to come out, they show you something called what? A preview, a trailer, right? That's all that your husband's, that anybody's supposed to see? They not supposed to see the whole movie. They only supposed to see a trailer. Like if y'all wasn't married yet, he's supposed to be wondering, I wonder, man, I wonder, I wonder. He's supposed to desire that thing. You know what I'm saying? Go through the process, marry you, and then get the goodies. Right, right. Not get out. the goodies on the first day. He can't see what's going on on the first day. Bring it out. Give him the movie trailer first. Don't give him the whole movie. Right. That's how it should be in everyday life. Why? Because you got other brothers out here. You go places, you know what I'm saying? And the first thing that a, a man look at on a woman when she got on something tight is what? Her legs and her butt. No, he looking at the butt and the legs first. So God said what? Exodus chapter... Yeah, read that. Read that. Go back to Deuteronomy. Read Deuteronomy that. chapter 22 verse 5. Uh -huh. Get out. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Why? Because God gave the breeches to men. In slavery, our forefathers picked cotton in dresses. Right. Is that a hard thing to change? Is that a hard thing to change? That ain't that hard, is it? Read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. And neither can a man put on... If he had on a dress, how would you look at him? You, for you to tell him, get your behind in there and take that thing. What, what you got on the dress for? Right? Yeah. Do it don't look right. It don't look right. If, he, if you came home and he got on one of your bras, what you gonna say? <laughs> Something wrong with you, right? 
That is how God looks at a woman in pants. That's what right. are wrong with these people? Y'all the princesses on the earth. Teach. But guess what? Your enemies are not going to tell you that. School is not going to tell her that she's a princess. Right. right. School going to say you better not wear them dreadlocks up in here. Oh, you can't be a pro-black up in here. We're segregated. We're, we're, we're assimilated now. We're all together now. That's why you had the sister cleaving to the white woman. That's why she was cleaving to the white woman, because we want we want to be integrated and we want to stick side and side. Oh, that day gonna come when they gonna cleave to you if you keep these commandments and you enter the kingdom of heaven. But first, let's start with the easy things. Is it hard to get your address? No. I'm gonna tell you what. My wife, when we came into this truth, she took her she she had no problem coming out of her uh, pants. But I'm gonna tell you what she did with her pants. She split all of them down the middle and she made she turned them into dresses. Yeah. Every last pair of pants in my house, she split it down them and my daughter too. She cut all my daughter pants, she cut all her pants, and she sewed a piece in it. She paid it like because of course it ain't gonna fit right. So she had to add a flowery looking piece, different colors into the dress to make it look fancy. That's how we came into the truth. We didn't run out and buy a whole bunch of dresses. Right. Couldn't we didn't do that. She took her thing on clothes that she had, she split them. And she added some parts to it to make a dress. Right. Put fringes on it. And been wearing a dress ever since. And then a pair of pants has not entered my house since. Right. Yeah. This is how we change. These are not hard things. Right. It's not hard. Now, for God, for the most high God, and for you to enter the kingdom of heaven, would you put on a dress? Yes, you would put on a dress to enter the kingdom of heaven, right? So what if the kingdom of heaven was coming in 10 years and you knew it? Would you wear a dress for the next 10 years to be able to go to heaven? Of course you would. That's not a hard thing to do. Right. So you can start right there. Take the pants off, get on a dress. Real easy, right. right? One, that's one you can do. Now, give me that in Leviticus. You know what I want? I'm show you, show you one more thing. I'm gonna, then I'm going to show you, brother. I'm showing your wife, then I'm going to show you. Then you can decide. When you get home, you get, look. How you doing, bro? You do not have to do this alone. You are not alone. Right. You see all of these brothers out here? We got wives at our schoolhouse right now. Right down the street. You don't have to do this alone. You don't gotta wait and tarry and, 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 and just and wait to keep God's laws. You can do it starting right now, and we are here to help you. Right. right. Our families at the school are here to help you. You're not by yourself. Read. The book of Leviticus, chapter 13, verse 30. Come on. Now, then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow thin hair. We're talking about hair now. We're talking about your hair. A yellow thin hair. What color is your hair right now? Black. Not all black. Yeah, you got that goldish, yellowish looking thing in there? Why you put that in there? You like it? Give me Proverbs 3 and 31 real quick. Because how do we start this conversation? By the renewing of your mind. Right. See, here in America, we have been given the standard of beauty. Yeah. But we are the standard of beauty. That's right. Right. We should be giving the world the beauty that needs to be seen through our comeliness. Right, right. Through right. our liking. Right. They need to do what we say do. If, I got an example. When we started pulling our pants down, and walking down the street with our pants down, who else? everybody else started doing it, right? You ever, you know, if you ever noticed in old TV shows where like cowboy movies and stuff like that, they used to shoot their gun, they shoot their gun like this. But in the early 80s, in the late 80s, early 90s, we started turning our gun sideways. Okay. Who else started doing that? Everybody else. Everything that we do, the world will emulate. They will do. If we start walking in these commandments, if we as a nation of people start walking in God's commandments wholeheartedly as a nation, guess what? The whole world will follow. That's they right. have no choice. It's either they're going to do it or they're going to be put to death. Right. That day is coming. So here we have learned and been given a standard of beauty. That's why we have gold hair, blonde hair, green hair, purple hair, blue hair. When God gave you the standard of beauty from him own self. Right. Read what you got. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 31 For who? Envy thou not the oppressor Read it again Envy thou not the oppressor That color is, an, is a color from our oppressor Now you might say I like the color and I didn't think about it like that And I would agree You didn't think about it like that But because we've been conditioned 
and programmed for a particular state of beauty through the TV, through the commercials that we've seen over and over and over and over. Yeah. We got our people putting different things in their head, our sisters dying their head, and then finding out 10 years later what they got fibroids going on, that fibroid thing going on. Yeah. It's because of the relaxers and the different things you're putting in your head. Right. Oh, they are making you destroy and fry your brain. Right. Right. That's what's going on, sis. Going bald. This is why we have to do what? Renew. Renew our minds. Go back to the uh read that again. Proverbs. Envy thou not the oppressor. Come on. And choose none of his ways. So God says, don't envy your oppressor. Don't envy that blonde hair. Don't envy that gold hair. Don't envy what their 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 desire and their image of beauty is. Envy not your oppressor. Come on. And choose none of his ways. And don't choose none of their ways. Now go back to Leviticus. The priest shall see the plague. So the priest is looking at, we're the priest. Then the priest shall see the what? The plague. That is a plague. God calls that a plague on your head. You got to take it off. Read. And behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin. It said, if it be in sight deeper than the skin. And there be in it a yellow thin hair. That right there. Come on. Then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. You're unclean to God with that on your head. Read it out. That is unclean. But guess what? Pastor sitting in the church on Sunday, he can't tell you that. Right. Especially if you're giving $100, $200 in tithes every week. Get out. He ain't gonna tell you that. Smart. Especially if he getting four, five thousand dollars from you a year, ten, fifteen thousand dollars from you a year. He's living good off of your money. He's not gonna tell you that you are unclean to God, but the real men of God are gonna tell you, sister, repent. Take that out of your head and become the daughter of Zion that you are. Yes, right. You are a princess. This is a princess. Right. You are royalty. Right. And you must change. You got to renew your mind. Now I got another question. Is that hard to do? That's not a hard thing to do, is it? It's just that we have to decide to do it. Now, once you take that out of your head and you grow that afro or you do whatever you make, keep it natural. There are a lot of natural hairstyles that our sisters can rock and be fly. Right. I'm talking about be fly, fly. In a natural state. Right. Once you do that, you take off the pants, put on your dress, you're going to put something on the dress. Give me that in numbers. There's something that goes on the dress now. Now, your change is taking place. You're conforming. You're converting your soul like the Bible has said. It may take a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, but guess what? You're in the process. And the most high is sitting back saying, you know what? The sister is making changes. Right. Read. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Come on. Yeah. Speak unto the children of Israel. Who are we talking to? The children of Israel. Come on. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generation. What are fringes? See, you already know that. You know what the fringe is. Read. And then they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. These are, this is God's dress code for the children of Israel. Right. Everybody is not giving this. But why do we need to wear this? Free. And that it shall be unto you for a fringe, uh -huh. that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. So now you can be able to look on your fringes and say, you know what? I got to wear a dress. You know what? I'm not getting that hairstyle. You know what? I'm not doing this or that because that is outside of keeping God's commandments. I ain't doing that no more. I'm going to stick with the Bible and stay within the commandments of God. Right. Read. And do them. And do the commandments. Come on. And that you seek not after your own heart. That you seek not after your own mind. Remember, God's law is where? Within our minds because we're doing what? Renewing what? So read that again. And that you seek not after your own heart. That you seek not after your own heart, meaning your mind. Come on. And your own eyes. And your own eyes. After which you used to go a whoring. After which you used to go a whoring. The things that you used to do, you don't do no more. Why? Because we are renewing our minds. Come right. on. Right. That you may remember uh -huh. and do all my commandments. That you may remember and do all my commandments. And be holy unto your and God. be holy unto what? Your God. Unto who? Your God. Why did he make that? Possessive. Are those your are those your shoes? They ain't mine. Those your shoes? Uh, shoe on my the shoes on your foot. Yeah. Of your shoes, right? Yeah. They ain't mine. Is it? Read it again. That she may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. God says he is your God. He is your God. So that means the so-called white man God. 
unto your God. The so-called Chinese God. Your God. You the only one that got a God. The God of this Bible is your God. That's right. right. Why haven't we learned this in our church? Why? Why has nobody told this young sister that she is a princess? When we're in rulership, guess what? Your feet don't touch the ground. That's right. Ain't gonna be no more walking. You can have no corns and bunions on your feet no more. Bring it out. That's gonna be over with. Them days are gonna be over with. You don't want that? You don't want to wake up ruling a whole city of people? You don't want that? Of course you do. But there's something that you got to stop doing. Give me Leviticus chapter 19. Bring it up. Now we're talking about you, brother. Bring it up. Things that you can fix right now. Let me see your head. Okay. That looks good. Good clean, too. Read what you got. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 27. Come on. Get out. Ye shall not round the corners of your head. Uh-huh. Neither shall ye mar the corners of your beard. I want uh 20, which one? 21 and 5? Leviticus chapter 21 verse 5. Come on. Get out. They shall not make baldness upon their heads. So we see Michael Jordan, uh, Kobe Bryant's gone. We see all of these Charles Barkley. We see all these famous people out here. The Bible said what? They shall not make baldness upon their heads. You cannot take a razor and make baldness on your head. When you cut your head and you make it bald, God said don't do that. Read. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. He said neither can you take that razor and shave off the corner of your beard. Did you do that? Feel it, feel it. It's gone. Okay. You did that, right? God said don't do that. Come on. Nor make any cutting to their flesh. That means tattoos. Now, I got tattoos, but I didn't know. But now that I know, guess what? I can't get no more. You can't, you, you can't go get them undone because it's the same process. You just don't do it again. Just like your beard. You didn't know that God said don't shave that thing off. Now, you know that. So what are you to do now? You let it grow and you, you know, trim that thing up like that right now. Why? Because your badge shows that you're a man. Right, right. A man once told me there's two people on earth that ain't got hair on their face. That's babies and women. Which one are you? You're a man. You're neither one of those things, right? So the world needs to see you as a man. That's what they did to us in slavery. Right, Make right. us cut all our hair off and then they called us boy. Right. Bring it up. You're a boy. Right. Come here, boy. Shave all the hair. When you get certain jobs, they require you to do what? Shave your hair off. Why? Because you become weaker. You feel weaker and you look weaker. Right. Because you look weak, guess what? In, in, in his position, he feels like, I can talk to you like I want to talk to you. You're a boy. Don't throw no hair on your face. And you come in here clean shave, make it look good, tape it up. God said what? They shall not make baldness upon their head. Uh -huh. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So you can't do that. You can't do that. Now, how bad do you want the kingdom of heaven? Just like I asked you. If you had to do that for 10 years and you knew the kingdom was coming in 10 years, would you do it? You would do it, right? That's an easy thing. Let me show you something else that, that's real easy. Give me Leviticus chapter 11. I mean, uh, Corinthians 11. Let me show you something that's real easy. Bring it up. Deep. So easy. First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. Come on. Come on. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Who's the head of every man? Christ. Come on. And the head of the woman is the man. Who's the head of the woman? He is your head, sister. Yep, that's your head right there. That's right. The head of the man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. Come on. And the head of Christ is God. And even Christ has a head. Who's his father? The most high God. Read. That's the order. So you got the most high God, you got Christ. Then you got man, then you got women, and you got children. So that's your head right there. Right. Come on. Every man praying or prophesying. Now we're talking about the man again. Every man praying or prophesying. Every man that's sitting up a prayer, that's standing in the midst of prophecy. This is prophecy. Every man praying or prophesying, teaching the word of God, listening to the word of God. Come on. Having his head covered. Do what? Dishonoreth his head. Having what? Having his head covered, uh -huh. dishonoring his head. See that? How easy was that? Didn't have to explain it. That is repentance, brother. Right. Right. That's a sign of repentance. Right. So now you know. When the Bible is coming out, what you going to do? Take your head off. When you go into the church, what you do? When you go in the courtroom, what you do? You take that dang old hat off, ain't it? Why? Because Mr. White Man sitting over there looking at you like this. You're like, oh, no. <laughs> I want to go home today. We give reference to them. 
We give reverence to the white man. We have to give that reverence to each other. Right. We have to give that reverence to the Most High God in Christ. That's right. And that's an easy thing to do. It's not that hard. So I got a question. How long can you do that if you really want the kingdom of heaven? Could you do it for 10 years? Could you do it for 15 years? Could you do it for 20 years? Lord knows I hope it ain't 20 years before the kingdom come. But if it is, we gonna stay in this fight. We gonna stay pushing this truth and teaching our people. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.